This video is an introduction to the data set that we'll be working with for the next few lessons. This data set is called the Uhuru data set, and it's data on uh, acacia trees in Kenya. And it's part of an experiment that is designed to understand the influence of herbivores on vegetation. And it does this by excluding different size classes of herbivores. And there are three different treatments, and we can see them here. Uh, in the upper left, we see mega herbivore exclosures. And so these are cases where they put wires up at about two meters, and those exclude elephants and giraffes from the plots. In the top right image, this shows the meso herbivore exclosures where they use fences that start about a third of a meter off the ground to exclude uh, any moderately sized herbivores like impala. And then the bottom left image shows the full exclosures that exclude all mammalian herbivores by having uh, fences that go all the way down to the ground uh, and then control plots in the bottom right. So let's take a look at what this data looks like. So far in this class, we've been working uh, with CSV data, which stands for comma separated values. And if we look at what CSV data looks like, and we can do this by going down uh, into the files tab, clicking on a CSV data set and selecting view file, we can see that each value in the data is separated by a comma. It's comma separated values. If we look at our acacia data instead, it looks a little different. So I'm going to come down and uh, click on this acacia file here. And first we'll see that it ends in .txt. That doesn't mean it can't be comma separated, but let's see if it is. And if we click on this, we see that there aren't any commas. And that's because this data is separated using a different value, a tab. And we can tell that it's a tab, not a space, because if we go between two values where it looks like we'd have multiple spaces and arrow over, it jumps over all of them, so it's separated by a single tab. And so in order to import this data, we have to tell R what that separator value is, since it's not a comma. And we do this with an optional argument for setting the separator value. So let's go ahead and import this data. Uh, we'll call it acacia. And then we will assign it the output of read.csv our parentheses, quotes, and then the name of the file that we want to import. And because this file is kind of long and complicated, I'm definitely going to hit tab here uh, and let R auto complete it for me. And now after the name of the file, we add a comma and we say sep is equal to quotes backslash T. And that's because backslash T is how we indicate a tab character in programming. And so uh, we can run this and we'll see uh, that we get an acacia table. And if we look at it, things look pretty good in general. Uh, but if we scroll down the height column for a while, we'll see that in addition to containing the numerical information on plant height, this also includes the word dead if that stem happens to be dead. Is that good data structure? If you said no, you're right. Information on if the tree is dead should be placed in a separate column. But we have it in here, and so how do we deal with it? We'll deal with this for now by simply treating the word dead as if it was a null value. 
If it's dead, they didn't measure a height, and so we don't have a value for height, and so we're going to treat it as null. To do that, I'm going to put a comma here. I'm going to hit enter so that we fit all on the same screen. And then we're going to use another optional argument called na.strings equals. And na.strings is going to let us set the values that are read as null when the data set is being imported. And we do this by first creating a vector and then giving it a list of the strings that we want to count as nulls. And so in this case, it's just dead. So we'll say, quote, D-E-A-D. -E and now if we run this import and check our data file again, we'll see that instead of that dead value here, we have a null which is what we want. If we look at this data a little bit more, we can see that it's got information on the location and time of sampling. There's information on the treatment, so whether or not uh, all herbivores are excluded, just the big herbivores are excluded, whether it's a control and so on. And then there's also information on the size of the acacia in the form of height, as well as the diameter of the shrub of the tree on two axes. Uh, one is the widest diameter axis, and the other is the axis perpendicular to that. Uh, and then also the circumference of the plant. There's then information on how many flowers, how many buds, and how many fruits are on each plant. And finally, there's information on the ant species uh, that is present on that shrub. This is important because there's a really interesting ant-acacia mutualism where the acacia builds special structures that serve as houses for the ants, and the ants then rush out and attack herbivores that come to eat the acacia. So that's a quick introduction to the Uhuru dataset uh, that we'll be working with to learn about data visualization. Thank goodness I did that recording. Thank goodness I did that recording check and realized that my microphone was muted. <laughs>